Hello everybody, Joe here with Garden of Luma. I wanted to do a quick backyard tour for you guys to show you guys everything that's growing here and how it's looking and doing right now. It is the end of July, 2023. It's been a brutally hot July here in the Phoenix, Arizona area. I am in growing zone 9B here in the desert. And we've had, you know, records of 110 plus straight days for like, I don't even know right now, like 27 straight days or something crazy, which is just smashed a record of like 18, I believe was the original. So it's been crazy hot here. This is one of my canistel seedlings. I've been growing since I believe 2016. And you can see it's kind of looking a little rough up top here, some sunburn going on which is a common theme here. I feel bad for you guys that just started gardening here this year. It's been a rough year. And so hopefully things are going well for you. This is my Tikal Sapodilla. And again, a lot of these plants I purchased in 2016, just to give you an idea of the age of a lot of these. So this is doing pretty well here. One of the things with the sapodillas though is you, I have not really gotten much fruit off of these trees. They tend to flower, the call flowers for me really twice a year, like in late spring and like August-ish, September. And it's just so hot when it's blooming that it tends not to set any fruit. I think I've had one off of this tree. This is my Bradenton Loquat, doing really well here. It's gotten really massive. I've never really pruned this tree so far. It's probably pushing 15 feet tall. And this was just loaded with fruit this year. So I definitely recommend a Loquat for our area. It is a little bit of a challenge to get it started, like its first year or two. It doesn't like the the heat initially. Or, I mean, the heat it can kind of handle, but the sun, if it's in full sun or anything. So I used 80% shade the first year, and then after that it seemed to be fine. But it isn't really in a full sun area. As you can see here, there's a lot of foliage and stuff around it, but it does get a fair amount of sun throughout the day. All right, this is my Silas Wood Sapodilla here. And this is growing in a container, a 30 gallon tub. Uh, this one tends to flower more all year round in the warm months. And I do have, you can see back there, two fruit set on here that I've been waiting to ripen for about, I don't know, like 10 months now. So they take quite a while to ripen. But again, I mean, I've only had probably those are my, I'd say fourth fruit set on this tree. Back there is a guava Indonesian seedless and it's kind of struggled a lot due to all the shade from this large ash tree, my neighbors bush back there, the loquat. This was not really the best place to plant this tree. I had it growing in a container for a while and I put it back there just because I just didn't want to deal with it in a container anymore and didn't really have a good spot for it. It fruited initially in the container after a couple years and the fruit just to me tasted awful and it hasn't fruited ever since. There's a volunteer loquat seedling I just kind of let go there. I have blackberries growing all over the place here. This is the Rosboro variety. It's a thorny variety, which does really well here in the desert. A lot of fruit production on this. All right, here is my Subel white sapote. become like a pretty good sized bush here 
about six, seven foot tall. And I have a few fruit set on it. This hasn't really fruited much for me as well. I think it gets too much shade where it's at here. It took a really long time, several years before it really started taking off. I'd say over the last couple years, it's just really taken off. But I mean, I wanna say it took like four years before it really did much anything. And I had a fruit set last year and it didn't taste very good. So I'm hoping the fruit gets better. Uh, this is a red hybrid Jabba de Kaba here growing in a container. It got hit pretty good with cold this year. So it was kind of this weather this year has been pretty, pretty tough for gardening, especially for tropicals because we had a pretty long cold winter. It wasn't like extreme cold snaps that we tend to get like down in the 20s upper 20s but it was just steady like consistently cold at night in the 30s for a long time and spring was cooler as well so it did a number on some of the tropicals uh this is my wax jambu which i had to cut this back a lot it was pretty much bare after this winter this does not like cold at all, but it's bounced back. I thought it was pretty much dead after the winter. All right, back there is another one of my Canistel seedlings. This one I have in a container, and this thing is just massive, as you can see, kind of growing up in the ash tree here. And this one looks a lot better than my other two that are in the ground. This gets a lot more shade and these do not like a ton of our desert sun. But this one has flowered. I've not had any fruit set on it though. I'll be coming around here. My early grand peach tree here. And again, focus, there we go. It's a large tree. I aggressively prune this every year and it just gets really tall and big. Uh, had a ton of fruit on it this year. Really good crop of peaches this year. Here is my Cara Cara Naval Orange. And you can see some of the fruits here. This has a bunch of fruit. Does really well here as most citrus do. All right. Moving around here, see my garden bed. I have some watermelon here. I believe it was like art. I wanna say art how, but I don't think that's right. Um, it was native to Arizona, this watermelon plant I got from Rare Seeds Baker Nursery and planted these, I wanna say towards the end of June so I'm hoping I get a crop of watermelon probably late fall, hopefully. Um, you can see the remains of tomatoes. Tomatoes are definitely done for me, but I had an awesome crop of tomatoes this year again. Um, there is an orange sherbet mango. This was a new addition this year. So this was a seedling starter plant, which is doing really well. And it gets a ton of sun as well throughout the day. I was thinking this thing would fry up, but it's actually holding holding really good there. There is an African Pride Atamoya grown from seed. And this thing just does really well here. But again, no fruit. I've never had any fruit set on that. I cut that back aggressively every year and it just fills right back out. And I don't see a whole lot of sun scorch or burn on it. Um, back there is a jujube, which also does really well here. And I aggressively cut that back. Okay, let me move back here. This is a tango mandarin. 
And this is one of my newer plants as well. I planted this a couple years ago and it's really grown a lot. I don't have any fruit set on it this year, but I'm assuming next year I'll have a pretty good crop. Last year I had a couple on it, but not too much. I used to have a massive Barbie pink guava growing here in a container. The container blew over in a storm and snapped in half. And I just was done with it after that. But something is growing from the ground here, from the roots. So I don't know if that's gonna be a pink guava or what that's actually gonna be. I didn't really like the taste of the pink guavas. Here is my Barbados cherry, which is getting overrun by the neighbor's tree there. I've really got to kind of prune that because this thing likes as much sun as possible. Doesn't really want to be in a shaded area for sure. All right, here are my figs all growing in pots here. Black Mission right here. And this, I was pretty much done with this year. I had cut it back to, it was like just a, a stub basically. And I had a few cuttings. I was gonna try to start over on this, but never got around to really doing much with the cuttings. And here it is. It is filled right out and right back and has had tons of fruit on it. Conandria fig next to it in a pot. Violet de Bordeaux. And Peter's honey fig here. And as you can see, you can see all the figs on it. This has been a, a great season for figs for me. And one thing I've noticed this year as well, the birds have got some of them, but I haven't had as much problems with that the little beetle that gets into the eyes on some of the ends of these fruits here, you can see the eyes that open up on some of them. Some years I've had big problems with that where they're just, they cause the figs to spoil and, but this year I've not had that much of an issue. I don't know if it's been the heat or what. Okay, here is my mulberry, dwarf mulberry, doesn't look too dwarf right now. This thing has gotten massive this summer. I cut this aggressively back as well every year. And I also cut this Peruvian white guava back a lot, but they just bounce right back in the summer and fill out. And I'm gonna show you, this thing just gets loaded with guavas. I mean, this thing is just covered everywhere. And it looks really good, doing really well. I have my mangoes here. This is my item Araka, grown from seed. Um, kind of struggling. Got hit from the winter, wasn't looking good. And then summer's also causing it not to look too good. It had a lot of fruits last year. This year, nothing. Didn't even flower. My sugar apple back there, I aggressively cut that back this year. I don't see any fruit set on that. I had four last year, so that was good. You can see some of the burnage going on from the sun scorch on the mangoes. There's a carry. You can see the mangoes down there. I've had one ripe mango so far. Kit mango in there. And then Gary out here. But yeah, the sun's really beating on these guys. That is my other, my third canistel seedling. And you can see the difference between one that's getting quite a bit of sun and the others that are more shaded. This thing's just getting scorched. 
Then I just had some honey melons that were growing here for a while. They're kind of getting beat up and done now, but had several little melons off of that. All right, thanks for watching. Check me out at GardenOfLuma.com for more tips on gardening and growing fruit trees, especially in hot, dry climates like the desert.